Yes. <clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello, you guys. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. Yeah. So I can't do that thing anymore where I put all the timestamps up here, but my main man, Jeremy V, hopefully he's in the chat. If he's not here now, he's going to be here shortly. My main man, Jeremy V, in the chat is going to collect all of those time, all of those timestamps, and they're going to be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. But I have a full-on action plat action packed. Wow, we're, we're already off to a rough start. Hopefully the beer is going to fix that. Action-packed vlog for you guys tonight. Of course, I have a beer in front of me. Yes, cha-ching. We're going to be talking a little bit about what I've been vaping. Cha-ching. I have a little bit of mail, just a little bit, two packages worth of mail. But I know for sure one of those packages has something in it that we're going to use and install in a K-Fun tonight. Some British coils, not to be mistaken for British eyes only, but some actual, actual British coils from the wonderful, you know, vaping utopia, <laughs> the wonderful vaping utopia of the United Kingdom. I've got uh, a bunch of news and advocacy. We missed Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. I, I missed it because I was at the doctor and that's okay. But I do have a lot of news saved up for this here vlog. I have a retro vaping. I have a liquid tasting. I have a getting to know Grim Green as well. All the super chats are done at the end of every single segment, but welcome. Welcome, you guys. First things first, I guess what we need to do is uh, that one thing, you know, that one thing that's my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. So uh, I don't remember his name. I'm a terrible person. Oh my God, I'm a terrible person. What is your, Eric, Eric, Eric sent in, Eric sent in a video. And uh, right now I do that, like to do that one favorite thing where I like to hear from one of my subscribers. Welcome Tenacious TX Vapes. I see you there, Stan. I see my wife, Casey Pickle in the chat. Shadow Link, thank you so much for being, Danielle Jones, that's right. She's Matt Sinister, Powerbomb the World. The Irishman, did Legion Vape send you? Okay, I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, but right now let's do that one thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. And I already forgot his name. So let's hear right now from Eric. Hey, Nick. Eric here from Kansas. I'd give you a sh quick message, say hi, and want to thank you for all you do for the community, advocacy, educational, everything you do, man. Greatly appreciate it. Hopefully, once all this COVID stuff is done with, we can meet up and try to get back to the good old days. Good seeing you. Take care. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Eric, bro, you know what? Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate that. Boosh, there's a fist bump for you. If anybody else out there, I'm starting with a clean slate. Eric was the first one in the gate. I'm starting with a clean slate. If anybody else out there has a video similar to Eric's, maybe not similar to Eric's. I thought it was a weird choice to shoot like a horizontal video and then box it into a box. It just felt weird. Just felt weird, but if anybody else out there has a video similar to Eric's that they'd like to see featured on this here vlog program, you can send them over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark the subject, that one thing. You can shout out your shop, sh shoot the shit, show off your gear, shout yourself out, shout family members out, ask a question, tell me why you like Star Wars, tell me why you don't like, tell me why you've never watched Star Wars. Literally anything would be appreciated. Just send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Yeah, man. Okay, we're going. We're rolling right along now. I feel a little bit better. I, f I, felt, I felt like I was going to feel a little bit out of practice just because I didn't have a Tuesday Bro Tuesday. And whenever I miss a stream, it just feels weird. Like I get in front of the camera and it's just I, like, you know, it's that well, I don't know what to do with my hands type of thing. Like, what do I, what do, I do with my hands? We also, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, this whole YouTube has a sponsor now. Yeah, you didn't know that, but it does. I've mentioned this a few times in the past. This entire YouTube, my entire YouTube has a sponsor now. Uh, and I guess let's, uh, let's hear from our sponsor real quick. Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes. But so what? So what? Is Governor Cuomo the sponsor of my YouTube now? Technically, yes, but so 
What? In fact, yesterday, happy prohibition to everybody in the state of New York. Yesterday was the first day that the flavor ban completely went into, into effect in the state of New York. Uh, I've said this a thousand times, nysva.org. The, the most effective thing you can do, really, if we want to try to change what's going on in New York, call. Call the governor's office. Seriously, call Cuomo's office. Tell your story. Tell him why you're against this. Tell his office. You know, you're probably not going to get to talk to Cuomo himself, although honestly, that would be really cool to be able to, to, to tell your story to Governor Cuomo himself. Call. There is, there, are, there is things we can do. Hi, welcome to talking. There are things that can be done in the state of New York. All hope is not lost. We're trying to remain positive here. I'm trying to have a positive pot. Yeah. Happy fourth of the flavor ban. Yeah, exactly. Don logo. Happy fourth of the flavor ban. We got flavor bans in Massachusetts. We got, we're going to be talking about Massachusetts a little bit in the news and advocacy. We got flavor ban now in New York. We got flavor ban coming to, uh, coming to California. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This vlog is also brought to you by opaque jellification. Cause I don't know why I just keep saving this over and over and it just makes me chuckle, makes me chuckle. But before we get too far, before we get too far into this vlog, you guys, um, I, I'm, I'm already parched. It's, it's time to kick off this vlog correctly. I hope everybody has some sort of beautiful frosty beverage in front of them. It's time to have a beer. The beer that we're having tonight comes courtesy of Yo-Yo. Shout out to Yo-Yo Cool Kid Club member Kevin Chocolate. I think I saw Kevin Chocolate here. This is the Malaco Milk Stout from freaking Three Floyds Brewing. Now, Three Floyds has rarely released anything that has been cruddy. They Three Floyds just releases good beer after good beer after good beer after good beer. Three Floyds is one of those breweries that just, it's just great. It's like, uh, it's like modern times, you know? No clunkers, no clunkers at all. It's like Firestone Walker, no clunkers. Malaco Milk Stout. I, I know literally nothing about this. I spelled two of those words completely incorrectly. Oh, wow, look at that. It's a pretty highly rated beer. Oh, I shouldn't have looked at that. Damn it, I shouldn't have looked at that. It's gonna sway my judgment now. Well, we're gonna be pouring this irregardless because that's a word now, you guys. You didn't know this? The, the, the gibberish nonsense made up word of irregardless is now officially a word. So everybody that has been correcting people that said irregardless, you can say, you know, you know, that's not really a word. The word is, you know, regardless. You don't have to say irregardless, just like you don't have to say gotten. Gotten doesn't need to be a word. It's get and got. You don't need to past tense a past tense. You don't need to say gotten. What is that? After you got it? What? No, got. Anyway, we're going to be pouring this into a uh, Chimay glass. I'm assuming it's going to pour, uh, yep, black. It's like space without the stars. There's going to be, wow, there's just no head on this. Can I try to make one? Can I try to make a head on this? Not even close, Nick. Not even close. That is dark. This is a dark beer. What's up to you, Clarity? Irregardless uh, will never be a word. That's right, Ruby Roo, except that it is. It's in the dictionary now, so you can't correct people anymore. Uh, I've never had this beer before. I don't know anything about it. All I did was briefly glance at Beer Advocate and it says it's really highly rated, got a 92% over there. So instantly that like, you know, when you know that it instantly like changes how you think of it. You're not going into it with like cautious skepticism anymore. You're going into it kind of thinking, well, this is going to be good. Yeah, this is going to be a really good beer. So cheers. I can't, I can't even come close to reaching the camera. Clink. Cheers. Here's to you guys. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. I mean, it's spectacular. I, I was expecting a lot heavier of a mouthfeel. For a stout, it's, it's still very, very light in the mouth. Very, honestly, slightly clean finish. I get like, uh, I get like, I don't know, coffee on the, on the finish. I still have like, it tastes like I just had a cup of coffee, even though I know it's not actual coffee. It tastes, you know, that coffee, what's this? That coffee aftertaste that you get. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, really good. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Founders uh, Breakfast Stout a little bit. Honestly, reminds me of the Black House. The Black House a little bit from uh, from modern times with a little bit less dense. <laughs> That's how you describe a that's how you describe a mouthfeel, right? A little bit less dense of a mouthfeel. Dude. Okay. Yeah, that's that's spectacular. Big, hearty, stouty, malty. I, I'm dying to know I'm dying to know what what beer advocate thinks of it. Uh pours almost black, slight tan head. No. You're a liar. That's there was no head on there. Uh Smell is a tiny bit chocolate, some malt, but not oddly strong at all. Taste as smooth as sweet, mild chocolate, roasted malt, maybe a touch of vanilla for an 8%. It doesn't have that alcohol. Nope, not at all. I would not have guessed that this is an 8%er. Burp life. Okay, okay, cool. Well, it's an 8%er, you know? It's an 8%er, so that's going to be great. Yo, yo, to you, TT Vape. I see you there in the chat. I appreciate that. It's super coffee-y. I guess, yeah, I get some chocolate, coffee, malty. I don't really get like the touch of vanilla. I love it when people put put things like that, just this vague like maybe a whisper of vanilla. Only I can taste it. I'm some sort of beer super taster. I can taste the vanilla in it, but but you will not be able to. Mm. Um, it's good. It's good. <laughs> You're good. The uh, the only thing that I have that I might pair with this is uh, we'll, we'll get to this when we do the what I've been vaping. I've been trying all these Vaporesso guys. Uh, hopefully next week I'm gonna have a review for all of these. We're gonna judge Vaporesso. We're gonna judge Vaporesso hard on these products. Judging Vaporesso. I think that's gonna be the title of the video. Judging Vaporesso. But this is the PM80SE, the one with the 18650. I have some Cubano in here. V-God Tobacco Cubano, which as far as I know, this liquid should be allowed in the state of New York, right? It's just flavors except for a... (laughs) Zach, we'll get there when we get to the Super Chats. As far as I know, you can still have e-liquid. It just has to be tobacco flavored, right? So Cubano V-God, really, really stellar tobacco, and I think it's going to pair really well with this. Yes, it's going to be a boosh from me. Uh, beautiful, just just terrific together. The Vigod Cubano, it's like a sweet cigar-ish, I, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Sort of a, I pictured like dense, moist tobacco. Like if you could scoop up the tobacco in your hands and squeeze it, the goo that comes out would be what you vape. I realize right now that does sound kind of gross, but that's kind of like that that moisty, moisty, cigar-ish tobacco. It just goes really great with this. Really great with this Three Floyds. You know, and tobacco and beer, that's like the, that's like the classic, that's like the classic sort of pairing, you know? Shit, I'm stoked. I got a really good beer to hopefully last me through the rest of the vlog. I'm going to need bigger beers, aren't I? I'm going to need bigger beers to get me through the vlog. I mean, I need, might need a bottle of Golden Drock next week. Might need a bottle of Golden Drock next week. Yeah, okay. Holy crap, that's delicious. Shout out to you, Kevin Chocolate. Thank you so much for that beer. Really, really appreciate it. So uh, real quick, real quick before we get to Super Chats, I just want to talk about what I've been vaping. I don't have a bummer. I mean, I don't have a bump. <laughs> I don't have a bump per except for this. I believe I can fly. You know, Yach wants to record a new Yach song, and I'm not sure exactly how I feel about this because I I personally feel what makes the Yach <laughs> what makes the Yach song funny is that he just left it to me as a voicemail and didn't know that I was going to like memeify him and use him on my streams, and I think that's really where the comedy comes from. If Dwayne records a new song. Is it going to be as funny because he knows that I'm going to use it in the vlog? Then it's just Dwayne singing. This was like spontaneous, and that's what kind of made it funny to me. So I don't know if we're going to let Yach record a new song. Give me a, a yes in, or no in the comments or in the in the chat. If you think Yach should be able to record a new song, I don't think he should be allowed to. I think we should stick with just 
I believe. Just straight up Yak song. That's it. That's the Yak song. And it's even funnier because he doesn't know the lyrics. And he's like, any time of year. Pretty sure, pretty sure that's not in the song. So real quickly before the Super Chats, I, I've been vaping too much. Apart from the Vaporesso stuff, still hanging in there hard with the one free Max, uh, Max pod that works correctly, even though, uh, you know, pods are just destroying the vape industry. I, I still love it. You know, it's on the inside, 12 milligram, Blue Bear Hill. Yeah, Blue Bear Hill, Deep Cuts, Blue Bear Hill. It looks like the nose have it, you know? Yes, only if it's the Spice Girls. Oh, dang. Okay, I, I say no. I say we're going to go with no. Blueberry Hill on the inside, that's spectacular. Uh, this has still been going strong. Um, this coil head is on its last legs. This coil head, this 0.4 coil head has been in this Aegis Boost Plus for uh, almost exactly one month. We're like two days short of a solid month on this coil head. And granted, I haven't been using it like as my solo vape like all day, every day, but it gets heavy, heavy use. If I leave the house, I take this with me. It's, it's my nightstand vape. It's my coffee table vape. I take this with me a lot of places and it's got a ton of use and I am shocked, honestly, kind of a little appalled, just shocked really, that this coil head has lasted this long. And it's it's kind of been incredible. It It doesn't taste great anymore. It's got that... You know, you know when a coil head's dying, it tastes soggy. I got soggy coil head here. Honestly, it still does. That still does not taste that bad. Um, Odin, full size Odin. That's the Asgard Mini, twenty five millimeter on top. I don't remember the coils on the inside, but it's loaded up with Omboy's Mango. Every time I drip this, you just have to go any time of year. That's how you know how long you need to squeeze the bottle. That's the time you just go any time of year. And then that's perfect. You have it you have it perfectly uh perfectly wicked, perfectly wicked. No, perfectly dripped wicks. Or you or you flooded it or you flooded it like I just did. But that's been uh that's been kicking ass. Uh, Aries 2 on top of the SQ Mono has been like my mouth to lung jam. I have been using this Aries 2 wrong. And I just realized that the other day. I've been treating it too much like a K fund. I've been running it at too low of a wattage. And I haven't wasn't having like a really great vape from it. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fine. Oh, that's my, my pleasure. My pleasure, Spray Sore. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You did all the hard work. Hello from the United States to Sweden. I love your country. I have Sweden tattooed on my neck. That's how much I like Sweden. I was using it wrong. So I turned up the wattage and these MTurk aliens in here, or single coil alien rather, is crackly and beautiful. I should have a full review of this Aries 2 very, very soon. I just wanted to, you know, use it a bunch before I did a full review for it. But a 0.4 at 21 watts has been baller and i guess baller is a thing i say now man i kind of wish the flavor was just a little bit better you guys just a little bit better but we'll get there when we get there full full review uh, still with the god coils still with the deep cuts uh blueberry hill i still stand by what i said last week i get i get a spice from this you know kent's gonna be pissed off at me he he hit me up on marco Polo. I was like i can't believe you said that I can't believe you said that about Eric's juice. I can't believe you said that. It's going to keep people from buying it. It's be- it's a delicious juice. It's blueberry. It's it's like blueberry, a little bit of bakery happening in there. And it's a little bit of spice. And it's a unique blueberry. Really good. Uh, Lost Vape Centaurus with the TM24 Pro Series. Chris Bassard's framed God Coils in here. Stellar, truly stellar, truly, really very stellar. Um, got this freaking thing last week in the vlog. This is the Aspen Mod Co. Monarch Ultralight, topped with the Rye RDA and my favorite blue DHD uh, nub tip. I like the nub tips. I, I decided I don't like chop tops. 
Just don't like short 810s. I like long 810s. That's what she said. I just like long 810s. I need some distance between my mouth and the atomizer. I just I just do. Got some of uh, Duchess. Duchess says uh, strawberry cheesecake. I, evidently, I mean, obviously it's pretty good. I've been vaping through the whole bottle of it. There's a, a, like a little bit of a weird thing that I'm getting from it, but I can't quite place it. So I'm just going to say it's strawberry cheesecake. It's, it's just a pretty good strawberry cheesecake. There, I, there's one weird thing that I can't, I can't even pinpoint. I don't even know what it is that I'm tasting other than strawberry cheesecake. I know that's real vague and weird, but I don't know. I've just been thinking about it because I've been vaping it so much. But uh, Monarch Ultralight's been hitting nice, nice and hard. Do I have to vape everything that I say that I'm vaping, even though... I mean, it's what I've been vaping, so I guess I should show that I've been vaping it. Uh, set this up recently just because reasons I wanted to. That's the unholy recoil, the black and silver unholy recoil on top of the Augvape V200 in bright red. This is that tobacco. This is the tobacco from, when was this? The build stream recently? It's a tobacco. It's supposed to be a tobacco custard. It's from Burst. Remember the Burst tobacco Bold and the Burst tobacco Nuts? And the Burst tobacco Bold just smells really bad, just smells not great. This smells similar-ish, not quite as bad, but similar-ish. It doesn't taste like a tobacco to me. I swear upon everything that I have, it tastes like Mountain Dew. I can't get around it. It tastes like a lemon lime soda. I don't know if I got the wrong liquid in a in a tobacco custard bottle or maybe this is the wrong label. I can't explain it. I get very little tobacco, no custard, pure lemon lime soda. Pure lemon lime soda. Still, that is a lemon lime soda. You know, there was a liquid way back in the day in 2016 that was... Uh, that was a lemon lime soda, fizz, fizz, fizz. I think it was just might have just been <laughs> might have just been called fizz. Might have just been called fizz. That's what that tastes like. That tastes like fizz. Uh, apart from the full size, I got the Odin Mini with the Blotto Mini uh, Boule Bolu on the inside. This has just been one of my you know all day everyday bangers. Great RTA, great little mod. And then lastly, but certainly not leastly, yeah, this is the Jake Scrapwood. This is the Jake Scrapwood custom DNA 250C brick. I don't know what he calls it with the imperial symbol on the back, dual 18650. That's the type two RTA on top. This is filled up with melons. What is it filled up with? Yeah, melons on acid from all day vapes. All vapes, sorry. Ah, all vapes. All vapes, melon on acid, and it's been uh, it's it's been thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. It's a really good flavor. It almost tastes similar. It almost tastes similar to this tobacco. That's weird. It's just weird. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. The tobacco, the tobacco tastes like a Mountain Dew. I used to drink an F ton, a metric F ton of Mountain Dew. I've been off the soda for years now, but I remember what Mountain Dew tastes like. And that, my friends, that tastes like Mountain Dew, 800%. Uh, so before we get any further, it's time to do some super chats. I have some birthday singing to do. I have some birthdays. Some of my Yo Yo Cool Kids Club have birthdays either this week or like tomorrow or yesterday. I don't remember the exact dates. All I remember is Disco Potato. Disco Potato's birthday is tomorrow. This guy in the super chat, C Skyne Run, who I can never remember his name. We thought his name was Scott. His name's really Colin. It's his birthday soon as well. Duchess Vapes of Strawberry Cheesecake Duchess Vapes. It's his birthday coming up. And then finally, Eric. He just goes by Eric. His birthday is coming up. So I'm going to sing happy birthday. 
Right now, uh, Colin just left a super chat and said, I think I should change my name. <laughs> I'm thinking I should change my name, yo yo. It's cool, Colin. That will forever be implanted in my memory now that your name is Colin. That will be forever implanted in my name. What? Uh, okay, thanks, Pickle. Appreciate that update. Appreciate that update, Pickle. So, everybody, can we all sing? Happy birthday to Disco Potato, Colin, Duchess, and Eric. Happy birthday to Disco Potato, Colin, Duchess, and Eric. Happy birthday to Disco Potato, Colin, Duchess, and Eric. Happy birthday to you. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Skip around the room. Happy birthday, you guys. Appreciate the support and a a huge, just a massive yo-yo, yo-yo to you guys. Asylum Vapes. Asylum Vapes is back. You just said Grim, I'm back. Asylum Vapes. I was kind of wondering where you went, my man. Thank you for being back. I appreciate that super chat. Kevin Chocolate. It's Mother Truckin' Vlog Day, dude. Yeah. Fucking A, Kevin Chocolate. Mother Truckin' Vlog Day. We're just here to truck some mothers. Appreciate you. Michael Lawyer, very gracious of you. But so what? Well, thank you for the super chat. Did Michael Lawyer send me a super chat? Technically, yes. But so what? Vapelians, so fucking excited. Hey, so fucking excited. That's really more of a Scottish accent that I'm doing now, like vaping Vec, vaping with Vec. Vaping with Vic, Vaplians. So fucking excited. I got some Vaplians coils. We're going to be putting them in the K-Fun. All good. We're going to be comparing it to the Aries tube. All good. Appreciate you, bro. Southern Comfort. Tell a friend of mine that they can't run fast, so don't even try. Ridicule them for being slow. That's fine. I don't know what that's from. Is that from something Southern Comfort? I'm bad with references. Like outside of either the Simpsons community or the office, I'm not going to get it. Star Wars. Star Wars, Simpsons, The Community, The Office, those are the ones I'm going to understand. I won't understand the rest. (laughs) So I don't know if that's from something Southern Comfort, but uh, appreciate you being here, bro. Hamish, love your work. Kisses for pickles and the poochie. And remember, Rad Dad Rocks. Thank you, Hamish. Appreciate you so much, Hamish. Appreciate you. Zach, yo, yo, I made it. What's up, guys? Hey, Nick. Hey, Zach. What's, What's happening, Pizza Beard? Appreciate you, <laughs> appreciate you, Pizza Beard. How you doing, man? Daniel, two trips. Oh, just love. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Just love to you. Kevin Chocolate. Tonight's uh, Three Floyds Center Square Peach Berliner. Oh, a Berliner Weiss. Awesome. That sounds awesome. Cheers. I'll, I'll drink to that, Kevin Chocolate, from the beer that you sent me. Cheers, bro. Yeah, exactly, Zach. Got Zach here with the super chat. A cough of chocolate. A, co- a sneeze of chocolate, just a whisper, just a, just a, just a, just a mask, COVID mask cough of chocolate. Uh, patches, very gracious of you. Hey, moist goo. Yeah, you, you can picture it, right? Like if you took a bunch of soggy tobacco and just, <laughs> and just squeezed it, moist goo would come out. That's what Cubano tastes like. Look, I won't steer you wrong. All day, er day. Uh, What's available after the PMTA? RDA, RTA, RDA, RDTAs? Big old question mark from me. I, I don't know what's available after the PMTAs. I don't know. In fact, I, we'll get, I, I was going to mention this in the, in the news and advocacy. I think that our focus moving forward from now until September should just be focusing on the PMTAs, trying to get PMTA reform. I'm going to get a list of people together that we need to tweet at. We need to do, we need to have some sort of rallying like uh, Twitter or social media campaign focusing solely on the PMTAs because all of these flavor bans, it's not going to matter much after September when the PMTA goes through and nothing is allowed on the market anymore except those liquids that pass the PMTA. The PMTA, I guess, is mostly focused on the liquids. I don't know. If Aspen Modco needs to put their 3D printed battery box through a PMTA, it's not a finished tobacco product. Technically, I don't know. But so what? I think that's where we need to be focused is the PMTAs all day or day. So while I don't have an answer for you, uh, 
That's where that sentence ends, period. I don't have an answer for you. I wish I did. I don't. Matt Sinister, shout out to the Vape Stew crew. Cheers, Nick and fam. Hell yeah, shout out to the Vape Stew crew. Love the Vape Stew crew. Keep it, keeping it real over there on the Vape Stew crew. Shout out to you as well, Matt Sinister. Powerbomb the world. Hashtag powerbomb the world. Asylum Vapes. Uh, Want to shout out Box Mods Vapor on FB on Facebook. And it's not Box, B-O-X. It's B-O-C-K-S. B-O-C-K-S Mods Vapors on Facebook. We can absolutely do that. New Wave Dave. I think Dwayne should sing Hero from Mariah Carey. Oh, oh, we could have requests for Dwayne. See, that could be funny. That could be funny, but only if he does it on video. He can't hide behind just a voicemail. He needs to sing it on video. If Dwayne wants to record a new Yacht song, he has to do it on video and, and sing it live in person. That's, <laughs> that's how it needs to go. Matthew, very gracious of you. Uh, whoops, kind of got, got out of track here. Matthew, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Nick, uh, is flavored vape illegal in New York? Yes, but so what? Still, we fight here in New York. Uh, thanks for all you do. Oh, my pleasure. It's, it's really my pleasure there, Matthew. Really my pleasure there. Um, we're going to end up here with uh, TT Vapes. Can we get uh, Yawk Song Tees with a slightly perplexed picture of Dwayne? <laughs> no way can it be re-recorded, bruh. I agree. I agree. And there could be Yawk Song T-shirts uh, coming out in the future. Um, there could be. I might see the thing is if I do Yak song t-shirts and it's going to be this whole thing, like I'm going to have to give Dwayne money for them. Like I can't just steal his intellectual property rights. <laughs> you know, I can't just do that. Well, what are you going to do? We might be able to get Yak songs. Okay. Let's do, let's do sexy King Phil grim. Yo, yo, any free base, 50, 50 juice you can recommend. I tend to buy 50, 50 juice from EC blend often. Um, the only one that I know of really that's kind of out and popular right now is, is Matt's new liquid unsalted. I think it's only available in Canada. I'm not a hundred percent sure how you can get it in the States. You might need to hit up Matt, but if you want an unsalted 50, 50 juice, Matt's new line unsalted is that thing. Otherwise DIY DIY. So we're going to pick up, uh, we're going to pick up the super chats again here with living hints, but we got to move forward into this vlog. We have we've got so much to do, so much to do, so little time, so much to do, so little time. So what should we do first? I don't know. We, should we mix it up? We've been sticking to, the, I want to get to the news. Let's do news. No, let's do mail. Let's do mail and then the news because there's not a lot of mail and I have to build a K fund. Mail. No, I thought I would make it back in time. Well, we're going to use this knife. I don't want to use the good knife. Where is the good knife? Where's my Gerardo knife? Did I leave it out in the living room again? I probably did. I was playing with it, left it in the living room. Um, we got some mail here from uh, the United Kingdom. You know how I know? There's a picture of the friggin' queen. Yeah, there's a picture of the queen on here. Is this it, Vapelians? Is this the box? Is that the box? I think that's the box. I want to do the I want to do the mail because I know it's late in the United Kingdom and I know that Vapelians has been staying up all day just to see this magicalness happen. Just to see this happen. This was supposed to happen last week, didn't happen last week, and that's okay. Vapelians. Oh, I see there's some literature. Hey, you have pretty good handwriting, Vapelians. Dear Nick, I'm not usually in her business of blowing smoke up people's asses, but I felt as though it was important to you know why, how important you are for me and the community. Oh, come on, man. Don't give me feels here. Uh, when I was, when I first started vaping, your channel was one of the first that I came across, th that I came across, and I've been a fan ever since. Uh, your warmth, personality, and passion for these products and the community <laughs> is conveyed so strongly. Um, this is reflected in your actions in real life. Uh, you're a champion. Stay strong for our right to choose a safer alternative to cigarettes. Uh, you don't just talk the walk. Talk the talk. You walk the walk as well. I, pr I appreciate this, Vapelians. You're giving me too many feels here, man. When we met at Vape Jam in 2017, I saw how nice you, how much, how 
Okay, I take back what I said about your handwriting. It's not great. You spent with your fans and myself and, um, and their affirmation, and that affirmation, my belief that you really care. So thank you, uh, Nick, for everything. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Vapiliens. Thank you very much. In this package, you'll find some of my handmade coils, three pairs, uh, some K- Canthal mouth to lung aliens, some three ply fralians for your mechs, some mohawk aliens, and because you said you don't have as many, some three millimeter ID aliens. Yes, uh, as you'll find a 60 mil of my favorite juice. Gin, what's it called? Gin's addiction? Is it called Gin's addiction? Though by. Sup, though by. Is it called Gin's addiction? Okay, maybe I don't know. Uh, it's a black currant lemon gin absinthe menthol. Hopefully you'll love it as much as I do. I, I, I don't see why I wouldn't. That's incredibly unique and I love black currant. It would mean the world if you put some of these mouth aliens and you're banging along with that juice. I understand if you don't though, because uh, I know you're running, because I know you're running long. Yeah, running long. Uh, I am going to, I'm in closing, please can you shout out my IG? Yeah, at Vapelians. Here, I'll show you the logo. Vapelians. Can you see that? Too dark? Pronounced Vapelians. Vapelians. It's Vapelians. Uh, if you do the setup on the vlog, I'll let you speak in an English accent whenever you like. Sorry about the shitty handwriting. Okay, Vapelians. Well, as long as you apologize, that makes it all okay. I save every note that I get in the drawer, so that's where it's going. Now, let's see, what's, let's see, what, let's see what Vapelians has in store for old Grim here. Here's the liquid. I can smell it because it's leaking all over the place. That's okay. That's okay. That's why we have uh, little rags and things. That's why every vapor has rags everywhere. I used to want to install just a roll of uh, paper towels, like a paper towel dispenser in my office because I use paper towels so much. I can smell it through this bottle. I'm just kidding. That's the excess on the outside. Dude, that smells... That actually smells pretty rocking. <gasps> okay, it's not broken. It's just one of those bottles. I thought I broke this. Did I break this? No, it's just one of those bottles. Okay. I'm terrified of this bottle right now that the first time I go to squeeze it, that little nubbin's going to just fly off and I'm going to flood my office and my entire life and my entire being with black currant licorice menthol liquid. Okay, Vapelians. Well, it's time. Let's see, mouth to lung aliens, here they are. Mouth to lung aliens, two and a half millimeter. These are three core, 30 gauge uh, with Canthal, 40 gauge clapped in, uh, no, so my apologize. My apologize. My apologize. These are mouth to lung aliens, three 30 gauge Canthal core with 40 gauge clapped in Niachrome 80. Did I say that right? I definitely did not. I definitely did not. Uh, it's okay. Your liquid, your liquid, your your liquid, it leaked all over the Vapelians, uh Your your cool Vapelian sticker logo here, leaked the leaked the hell all over it. That's okay. Like I said, that's why we have rags. Did your liquid leak all over the place? Technically, yes. But so what? Okay, before I install these in a K-Fun, which I got set up right here, all cleaned out, ready to go, there's another package here that I don't know. It's just, it's so, it's so small. I don't know what's in here. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin anything. What, what is this? Oh, it's coils. It's more coils. Lethal coils. Oh, lethal coils, bro. Yes. Nick, hey there. I hope this letter finds yourself and Casey well. I wanted to send these to you in hopes that I might ask your opinion of them. Oh, oh, you'll get it, lethal coils. I am not asking for a review or to have them shown on camera. That is your prerogative. I just personally would like to hear your thoughts. First of all, lethal coils. Chris, you have way better handwriting way better handwriting than Vapelians. Just a thousand times better handwriting. I have included two pair of 0.1 aliens and two pair of 0.12 aliens crafted with Nia Chrome 80, uh, two, 26 gauge uh, triple core with 
36 gauge wrap. I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for coming to our show, coming onto our show. I had a great time wishing you all the best of your days. Chris, lethal coils. Shit, yeah, lethal coils. Okay, yeah, this is the, uh, okay, awesome. Lethal coils. Thanks again for the love and support, brother Chris. Lethal coils. If you guys aren't hip to lethal coils over there, why don't you hit up lethal coils for some lethal coils? Nicely done, lethal coils. I appreciate that. I am, uh, I'm, I'm definitely going to use those. In fact, I'm going to save some lethal coils for the build stream on Monday because I have a, a dope product planned for the build stream on Monday. But what I'm going to do right now, what I'm going to do right now uh, to Vapelian's request is I'm just going to install these mouth to lung aliens on this K Fun. I have a K Fun Prime, to, or not a K Fun Prime. What am I doing? Nick, get your shit together. Get your shit together, Summer. Uh, it's a K Fun Light 2019. And if I can find a Phillips head screwdriver, we'll be able to install these. This should be a pretty quick process. I've been building on the K Fun for quite some time, so I feel like I should be able to get this done in a timely manner. And then we can, uh, we can try out this crazy juice, this crazy juice. At least it's just a single coil, you know? It's not a dual coil. Dual coils just take me longer, you know? They just do. Look, I'm not Kent. I'm not Omboy OC, you know? I'm not Beecher Howard. I'm not a professional builder. I might have to go full Russian hacker mode, take off my glasses, that's okay. We're going to install these in the K Fun 2019. Boosh. Boosh. Whoa, it's a little bit of a tight fit there, buddy boy. It's a little bit of a tight fit there, Vapelians. I feel like I could pull one wrap off of this and it would honestly fit a lot better. But that's okay. We're not going to do that. There's no time. That's what she said. There's no time. So these are two and a half millimeter. See, Boosh installed. Boosh do this. Boosh lift it up a little bit. Woof. It's a tight, tight fit. Tight fit. Tight fit, my man. Tight fit. It's all good. Let's clip these leads. Let's get this wicked. I can't even I can't even count on two hands, all my fingers and all my toes, how many times. I have uh, built and wicked a K-Fun in my days. I've been vaping the K-Fun since, you know, when was that? 2012 that the first K-Fun Lite came out. The first K-Fun Lite, I think the K-Fun Lite Plus was 2013, maybe. Let's see what these ohm out to. 0.4. Let's do the old uh, strumming pulse right here. We're gonna do some strumming, some pulsing, some strumming, some pulsing, some strumming. Some pulsing, get these glow, whoops. Oh, I melted them, bro. Fucking hell. 22 watts was way too high to do some pulsing and strumming. That was a dumb move. Dumb move, Grim Green. Yeah, I messed these up royally, bro. No, they should still be working, yeah. They should still be working fine. 10 watts is, oh, because I have it set to nickel mode. Shit, how do you change the, how do you change it back to wattage mode? I, I don't remember how to do this on the DNA uh, 75. I think it's the fire button and the up button, right? Okay, I need help in the chat. How do I change the DNA 75, the original DNA 75? How do I change it back to wattage mode? Because it got stuck in nickel mode and it's firing it way too hot. Way too hot. No, it didn't melt. It's just in the wrong, I know. Complete noob, complete noob. It, it somehow got, got jumped right into TC mode. I haven't used this in TC mode ever. So I don't remember. I'm going to have to Google this. Is this the thing I'm going to have to Google? Vapor Swaggins, help me out here. DNA 75 original. DNA 75. 
wattage mode. You have to lock it first. One, two, three, four, five. Locked. And then you hold the, uh, nope. Normal mode. Normal mode. Stealth mode. Normal mode. Nope, that's not it. Nope, that locks the ohms. No, I don't want to change the temperature. I want to get it back to regular wattage mode. You hold all of them, right? Hold the left, hold, okay, you guys, everyone's telling me something different. Hold left and right buttons, hold up and down buttons. If I hold the up and down buttons, it just says hold to change temperature. It doesn't let me change it to wattage mode. It's stuck in nickel mode right now, NI mode. It's locked. Yes, there it is. I, it's all the buttons. Lock it and then hold all the buttons. That's the ticket. Nope, you guys are all wrong. Hold left and right down buttons. Do not lock it. Co incorrect, Chris Val. Appreciate you. you. You lock it and then you hold everything. Everything. Nickel, titanium, watts. Okay, there, we're back at watts. Ugh. It's reading a 0.6 now, 10 watts. Okay, now I'll be able to glow these. I was wondering why it was firing it like crazy, crazy hot. There we go. Now they're glowing perfectly flawlessly evenly. Perfectly flawlessly evenly. Man, what am I new here? And I just friggin' burned my finger on the coil. What am I new here? Look, I just haven't used a DNA 75 in a really long time. I mean, I have, but I'm a wattage vapor. I just stick to wattage. Stay hydrated, hydro homies. Cotton bacon's going in. Cotton bacon prime, I should say, is going in. Cotton bacon prime is going in. Man. This better be worth it, Vapelians. If this sucks, I'm you're gonna I'm just, you're I'm kicking you off of the Patreon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I would never do that, bro. All right, it is built. It's been wicked. Almost. Gonna do a little bit of a lift and press here. Man, man alive. Let me do the lift and press. Man, that was tough. I can't believe I forgot how to do that on a DNA 75. To be fair, I always hated the DNA 75. It was never my favorite board. I kind of hated it always, and I never rarely used it. In fact, what you see in your in my hot little hand right now, this Roxasa, is the last... DNA 75 that is in any sort of normal or regular rotation in my life. Man, that really hurt. I burned my, I burned my, uh, my ring finger. I burned this finger. Is it going to focus? Focus on my hand. I burned the tip. I freaking burned the tip of my finger. This Roxasa mod is the last DNA 75 that it will ever be in my rotation ever. Ever. In fact, there could have been any chip in this, any chip at all, <laughs> other than the DNA 75, and it would have been better. So we're going to take this crazy liquid, 12 milligram. We're going to load up this K-Fun, and then we're going to freaking vape the damn thing, the damn hell ass thing. Oh, there's some vapors happening. All right, let's turn this wattage up now. That was unbelievable. So these came out to a 0.6, my man. Is that supposed to, is that correct? Seems correct. I don't have glasses on, so I can't see the chat, but it seems correct. Let's get this tank full. Let's attach it to the, uh, <laughs> to the deck here. All right. Well, now 
Now, Kfun, now what do you have to say for yourself? Is this going to be a liquid Vapleans that I can never get out of here? Like once my Kfun has this flavor in it, black currant, licorice, mint and menthol, is it just it's just never going to leave? It's going to be permanently seared into this Ultim for the rest of its life. You're telling me 16 watts, Robert? All right. I don't know who you are, Robert, but I'm taking your advice. Actually, I'm not. Let's try it at 15 watts. 15 watts, Vapleans. Cheers. Fluid, right? Mowgli vapes. You called it. Fluid. It's fluid. If anybody remembers way back in the day, radiator fluid. This is ra- radiator fluid. Yeah. Michaela, forever unclean. You know what? I like this. I'm taking it up to 16 watts. I take back what I said about you, Robert. 16 watts. Um, really good, really very good in a mouth to lung. I don't know how that liquid would hold up in like a full lung bro lung setup, but in this K fun mouth to lung, really very nice. I, I, I want to kind of want to turn up the wattage a little bit more. Can I do like 17 Watts? Can I try to get a little bit of a crackle from this? You know, I've been practicing my O's on the couch and they always turn out better than whenever when I'm on video. Yeah. Radiator fluid has water in it, banned water. Um, no, radiator fluid. There was a liquid back in the day that was basically this. It was black currant, black licorice, mint and menthol. And they called it radiator fluid. And I hated it because I just did. It was weird and gross. And I'm like, no, I just want a strawberry flavor. I just, one, just give me a strawberry flavor. That's all I want. I don't want anything weird. Just give me strawberry. This is this is delicious. This is delicious. Damn. All right, Vapleans. It was worth it. It was worth the wait. I like the cooling. I love the licorice. I love the black currant. I've been I haven't had any like minty menthol cooling liquids in my setups for a while now, and I've been missing it. I've been missing it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mad Murdoch's radiator fluid. Radiator fluid. This is legitimately good, Vapleans. Thank you. Thank you for the coils. Thank you for the uh, gin's addiction. I like it. I love menthol because when you breathe in afterward, it's not quite gum, but when you breathe in afterward, you get that nice, like cooling, refreshing sort of, yeah, you know, yeah, it's not just nothing. It's, it's yeah. Awesome. Vaping great. The K fun just has such good flavor. Such good flavor. Dude, that's banging. I like it. You know what I like about this the most is that nobody's going to steal this vape from me because Casey Pickle would hate this liquid, would just straight up hate this liquid. Licorice, black licorice, not her jam. My jam all day long, for sure, black licorice. Dig it. Dig it a lot. Cool, man. Well, thank you. Let me have another rib here. Man, that's good. That is legitimately good. Let me do a little bit of rearranging on my desk over here. Just uh, don't want these taking up too much space. So I'm going to put them over here. Obviously, I have not been sticking to the... Uh, coaster rule because there's 8,000 things on my desk right now. Should we try the, uh, I'm just going to call it uh, Vapleans radiator fluid. <laughs> that liquid is your nightmare. 100% it is. 
I'm going to try it with this beer because why not? Because we're here right now. Let's just try it. Mmm. Uh, no. I regret every second of that. Please never do that. Don't have that. Do you drink that? Do you drink beer with this liquid, Vapleans? Do you? Weird. That was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced. That was b- beyond bizarre. It completely changed the flavor of the uh, of the beer. I like this. I'm glad I got a banging mouth to lung right there. Been wanting to set up that K-Fun again. All right, so I don't need you. <laughs> DNA 75 wattage mode, my quick panic Google right there. <laughs> my quick panic Google. Um, before we get to news and advocacy, let's do a couple more super chats. Oh, that was the end of the vape mail segment as well, uh, Jeremy V. Super chats. Okay, that's all you get. Living hints. What do you have to say? Appreciate you living hints. Some folks like chopped Ford Model T hot rod. Some folks like chopped cannabis. Some folks live. Some folks Some folks like live. <laughs> Cheers, living hints. Cheers to you. Tenacious TX Vapes. Everything tastes weird. Do you have the ro- Ronas or allergies? You're worrying me, Brometheus. Uh, King of the Brotion. <laughs> Stan, God damn it. You're just so fucking weird. And that's why I love you. Um, no, I just, you know, weird is one of those words that you just say and it carries no meaning anymore. You know, you kind of just go, well, oh, it tastes weird. What, what's, what's weird? Define weird. Oh, weird. It's like Fargo. Oh, he was weird looking just kind of in a general sort of way. Just weird. Everything tastes weird. Rage and Vapor, very gracious of you. Mine, Eric, and Skyne had our birthday on Monday, the 29th of June. Oh, okay. Awesome. That Raging Vapor, you're Duchess. I don't know why you have three names. Raging Vapor, Eric, and Colin had your birthdays on Monday, the 29th of June. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you guys. Trey Watt, now sing happy birthday in a metal growl. Happy birthday. I can't do my old metal. My old metal growl was too too guttural. It was kind of like a like a like a deep one. And I when I was in a band, I had to put my microphone. It was like this. This was how I had my microphone. Like way up high like Lemmy. Ace of Spades. It was very much like this. And I would watch videos like live videos doing vocals and my throat would go <laughs> every time I did vocals and it was, uh, well, it was weird. It was weird and freaky. I'll try it. I'll work on my death metal vocals. Maybe I'll sing, Trey, when your birthday comes up, I will sing you happy birthday in uh, with some death metal vocals. Uh, Vaping with the Super Clouds, very gracious of you. Hey, Nick, it's Johnny from Vaping with Super Clouds from Biz- Brisbane, Queenlands, Australia. Have a great day. Hey, you have a great day. You you have a great day uh, in, in Australia. You guys got a little bit of a stay of execution, as it were. You don't have to worry about this until 2021. Here's my advice to everybody in Australia that fought hard to, to that fought hard and 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 started yelling at uh, you know MP uh, Greg Greg Hunt. Don't stop. Be relentless. Do not stop the fight. They've backed down a little. Back them down even further. Keep going. Australia is giving me hope right now. It's one of the little bit of hope that I have right now is in Australia. Wicked sex is 73% better on vlog night. Thanks, Nick. Yes, hopefully not during the vlog. I don't want this vlog playing in the background of people banging or I kind of do. Because then I could like root people on and be like, yeah, get it, get it, <laughs> get it, bro, get it, yeah. No, that's just weird. That's just creepy. The Irishman, very gracious of you. Uh, oh, I lost you, the Irishman. I lost you, the Irishman. Did you know Princess Leia's cell number was uh, 2187 and Finn's Stormtrooper number was FN2187? What? Is that real? I did not know that. I did not know that. Princess Leia's cell number was 2187 and Finn was FN2187. That's kind of cool. That's pretty cool. 
That's pretty cool. Hey, we are super good. How are you guys doing in the UK? Just cuz. I appreciate you, super good. You might hear some I hear a little bit more from Super Good a little bit later on. Uh, Steven, very gracious of you, just ordered uh, merch from your merch, bur- merch booth. Yo, yo, uh, from Vape and Juggalo 88. Fuck yeah, Steven. Fuck yeah, Vape and Juggalo 88. Um, we, we do, I do have a merch store coming really soon. Um, we open it up to just my patrons for right now, and they more or less cleared us out. So we need to restock on a lot of stuff. Like a lot of st- a lot of stuff, but I appreciate those. We're gonna be shipping those out on Monday, bro. Shipping them out soon. In fact, Casey Pickle right now, as we're vlogging, is packing up merch orders. That's how fantastic she is. Paolo M's How To Channel. Huh, very gracious of you. You didn't say anything. I'm gonna give you a shout out here. Paolo M's How To Channel. I'm very gracious of you. Uh, Spring USA Girl Reviews, <laughs> TRV crew up in the house. Much love, Grim. Much love back at you. Spring USA Girl Reviews, you and the Viking over there. Appreciate you guys. Jessica Gordon, very gracious of you. I finally registered to vote at 33 years old. I can't sit back and do nothing. Uh, you don't have to do everything, but you do have to do something. Yes. Yo, yoy. Hell yeah. Awesome. I'm so excited that you registered to vote. Vote your hopes, Jessica. Vote your hopes. Patches O'Hooligan, very gracious of you. Uh, anyone else forget that Omboy got a wrench? I did. Oh, yeah. Here, where's Omboy? We can take away his wrench. Is that what you're saying, Patches? Patches, if you want me to take away, if you want me to take away Dwayne's wrench, I definitely can. That's definitely an option. Vapelians. Grim Green, run it at 16 watts. All right. Is 17 watts okay? Because that's how it's going. God, I love a good mouth to lung. I appreciate you, Vapelians. That was awesome of you. Eifer, very gracious of you. Hey, Nick, just popping to say, yo, yo, I catch you on the replay. Got to send that vinyl ASAP. You don't have to, Eifer. I appreciate it, but no rush. Really, no rush on there. Stay hydrated, Hydro Homies. Yeah, all that talking. Jake Scrapwood, how are you, man? Uh, always vape what your wife hates more for you. Exactly. Always vape what your wife hates more for you. The problem is we are both heavily vaping the Omboyosi mango, and there's just not enough to go around. We're plowing through it like crazy people, like crazy people. So that's the only issue. Otherwise, she doesn't like most of what I vape. That's why like, I get into like tobaccos. I know she doesn't really dig on blueberry. She calls it a headache juice. She doesn't like boule bolu. She doesn't like tobaccos. She does not like the, uh, the, the black licorice menthol in any capacity. TK, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Stay hydrated, bro. Forever fly. Thanks, guy. TK, thank you. That's awesome. Very gracious of you. Travis Faulkner, cheers. I'm enjoying some good old wood stout paired with grandfather juice in the vape. Grandfather? I know nothing of this liquid, but I, I'm fascinated by that name, grandfather. It's funny, uh, when I went to Ireland, the first time I went to Ireland, um, they did, nobody knew what graham cracker was. Nobody knew what graham cracker was. It would say on descriptions of like, you know, oh, strawberry cheesecake with a graham cracker crust. And everyone said, what's graham cracker? thinking graham cracker, you know, I don't know, like it's a graham cracker. It's a graham cracker, okay? Nobody in Ireland knows what graham crackers are. Southern Comfort, did you catch up on Crowder? He's not on tonight, so I'm all the way here. Thanks for fighting the good fight. No, I haven't caught up on Crowder. I've been watching uh, Crowder clips lately. He's had some really, (laughs) he's had some really great Crowder clips lately. And here's the thing, I I like Steven Crowder mostly. He's one of those guys that I don't agree with everything he says, and I don't necessarily agree with his approach to a lot of things, but I do find him entertaining, and I do agree with him on a lot of stuff, just not just not everything, you know? I think it's important to, to follow people that you don't necessarily agree with everything that they have to say. 
I think you should get you should get news and opinions from multiple people, multiple sources. Form your own opinion. Hear all sides of an argument. Don't just don't just be in you know in like this echo chamber. You know, uh, Alex. Anyway, Southern Comfort, very gracious of you, my man. Alex uh, got my blueberry violence clone in my berserker mouth to lung. You got a blueberry violence clone? I told you it was easy. It's so easy. It's just two flavors. That's it. Blueberry cinnamon. Blueberry cinnamon. That's it. Uh, let's do the last through here before we get to uh, news and advocacy. All right. Uh, Sexy King Phil. I just checked out the unsalted line. Uh, some seem intriguing to try. <laughs> what the crap? Sorry. That was gross. <laughs> that was like that was like talking in the middle of burps, burping in the middle of talks. Sorry. Some seem intriguing to try. I might just get into DIY and make my own 50-50 juice. I will keep you posted. Really, that's the way to go. I mean, not to say anything about, you know, whatever. Commercial juice is great. I, I like commercial juice for the consistency of it. But there's some things that are just hard to get, like a 12 milligram 50-50 unsalt. That's just difficult. That's just difficult. Let me know how your DIY works out there. M. Gray, very gracious of you. What was your regular job before YouTube? Hey, M. Gray, that's a great question and a nice little refresher for anybody who's new to this here YouTube or this here vlog. I worked uh, prior to my career as this. Hey, I worked for Starbucks Coffee Company for 12 years. I started as a barista. I was a shift supervisor. I started training to be a manager. I switched from the retail side to the supply chain side. I worked in the tasting room. Me and my boss, Doug, were the coffee tasters for the Carson Valley Roasting Plant for four years of my life. That's when I was not smoking cigarettes. I had a job in sensory evaluation and you were just straight up not allowed to smoke. They said it affects your senses too much. You won't be able to taste the coffee. I went from there to the quality assurance department. So I was basically Creed. I worked in quality assurance for a few years. I worked in the distribution center for a few years. And I spent the last like five years of my career at Starbucks being a coffee roaster. Still to this day, one of the greatest, most satisfying jobs that I've just ever had. I love coffee. I love roasting coffee. I got, I, I used to teach coffee education classes. I was coffee nerd to the maximum power. Just coffee snob 18,000. Yeah. 18, 18,000, whatever level that is. So super coffee snob. I still to this day love coffee. Uh, I just don't drink it anymore because caffeine, uh, you know, makes, makes me crazy. Um, but that's what I used to do, M. Gray. Coffee, 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 coffee. You ever want to talk coffee? I could start a, a second YouTube channel and dedicate it to nothing but coffee education and, and that would be amazing. And I could do it and it would be awesome. My head is too full of so much coffee knowledge that it's just sitting there like rotting. Southern Comfort, everyone call Florida, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' office and tell him to veto SB 810. The number is on G search. Uh, do it, yes, do it. And be a badass mm, if like me, definitely. And here's the thing, Governor Ron DeSantos has vetoed stuff like this before. He has stood for harm reduction in the past. So there's no reason why he should be doing this now. He know, I mean, it's been years. He knows what vaping is. He, know how's it, he knows how it's going to affect his state. He definitely needs to veto SB 810. Get it out there. Get the phone number out there. All right. Well, we're going to pick back up with the Super Chats right after we do some uh, news and advocacy. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. We got some news and advocacy. And uh, I just wanted to play you one thing real quickly. Uh, I posted this on Twitter but it's a, it's a little two minute video and it's, it's weird. It's kind of creepy because this video is from 2009 and this was the first time that California had tried to ban vaping in the state. They've been trying to accomplish this vape ban, this flavor ban, whatever you want to call it. They've been trying to limit your access to far less harmful vapor products for 11 years now. And Stefan said something on Facebook today that really stuck with me. And 
someone had made a post about uh, some sort of flavor ban. Don't remember where it was, probably the Florida flavor ban. And someone had chimed in underneath and said, you know, smoke or vaping got me off of smoking. I haven't been in the community for a few years now, um, but it's crazy to me that this shit is still going on. And Stefan said something to the effect of, it's not necessarily a bad thing that this stuff is still going on. All that means is that we have been standing in their way. It means that they haven't accomplished what they want to accomplish yet, which is apparently to ban vaping and get people back to cigarettes. We've been standing in the way of that for 11 years now. California tried to ban vaping in 2009, and this is just a quick little two-minute video of me in 2009 saying essentially the same thing. I mean, this video could have been recorded last month. The information is essentially the same. The message is essentially the same. It really, really, really tripped me out watching this. So uh, just go ahead and watch this and, and tell me, this is like the twilight zone. This is the twilight zone. It's creepy how accurate this still is right now in 2020. Hey guys, it's Nick. It's Grim Green back here today. This is important. There are only six days left before the SB 400 bill that will ban electronic cigarette sales in California goes into effect. Six days? They're going to ban electronic cigarettes in California. How is everybody not outraged at this? We're going to send emails to Governor Schwarzenegger asking him to please veto Senate Bill 400. I'm going to put a link in the description and there's a simple cut and paste email. Please ban Senate Bill 400. It's designed to ban electronic cigarettes, which are, according to all preliminary studies performed by the Food and Drug Administration, a safer alternative to tobacco cigarettes. Placing a ban on them will force many users to go back to regular <laughs> cigarettes at the expense of their health, their loved one's health, and the health of those around them. Rather than banning them at the request of big tobacco, we should <laughs> embrace them, regulate them, and help forward their acceptance for positive health benefits signed your name. Please, please, if you live in California, if you don't live in California, support our fellow vapors in California who are going to about to have the ban hammer dropped on them. I can only do so much. We need everybody's help. So please, please follow the link. Send an email to the governor. Please get him to veto this bill. Don't sit here hoping someone else else will make this go away. Let's make them hear our voices. This has to stop. Um, it has to. We have to make some noise. We have to sign this, we have to send emails. I really hope everybody gets on this. Um, I've sent emails, I've called. This is ridiculous that they're trying to take this away from, from our fellow vapors in California. There's a lot of states that follow suit to California. So if this gets banned in California, you can bet your ass there's gonna be a lot of other states that are gonna have the same knee-jerk reaction and bring down bills and make them laws like this. So it's not just affecting California, this is starting to affect everywhere. So God damn it, get out there and uh, keep on vaping. <laughs> what? That is crazy to me. That is crazy to me. And yeah, that camera was uh, was uh, super high resolution. It, you look, back then, yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. I still barely know what I'm doing. I didn't know that, we, you know, whatever. I just bought a little flip camera, set it on my desk on this dorky little tripod. And I'm like, hey guys, the Grim Green here. Just gonna... <laughs> Just gonna reach, you know, and I and I, I like super glued a little fisheye lens to it so that I could have a wider field of view. If I didn't do that, I had to set it like across the room in order to get me. And then I had to record my audio with an iPhone and then l l sync them up later. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. But how creepy is that message that we're still sending the same message that they want to limit your access to life-saving vapor products California has been doing this for 11 years now, but you know what? They have not succeeded. They have not succeeded. We have stood in their way at every turn, at every time. It was SB this, it was HR that, it was SB this, it was HR that. It was SB, remember SB 140? We were all fighting against SB 140 and SB 140 got pulled down. We can stand in the way of it forever. We can continue to stand in the way of it. They, th they think they're grinding us down. And you know what? They kind of are grinding us down. I, I've aged, <laughs> obviously, since then. 
I've, I've become more angry since then. I've become more bitter. I've become more jaded since then. But I have not lost hope. You cannot lose hope. Governor Ron DeSantos can veto SB 810. We can, we, can, we can end this flavor ban in California. We can reverse this flavor ban in New York. We have numbers. And as long as we use those numbers for good, man, you guys, I think we can really do this. I think we can really do this. So I guess the first real quick thing I wanted to touch on here from the news and advocacy was uh, I, post, I posted up a poll on my YouTube when I said we're not having Tuesday Bro Tuesday this week. I asked, I asked all my subscriber base, what was your path to vaping? I just wanted to know. I was just interested to see what was your path to vaping? I said there are no wrong answers. I'm just trying to get a feel for people's journey. I gave the options of were you a heavy smoker prior to vaping? Were you a casual smoker prior to vaping? Were you a social smoker with, you know, social smoker prior to vaping? Maybe only with friends at a party or socially. Uh, I didn't smoke cigarettes, but I cons- consumed other tobacco products, or I never really smoked or used tobacco. Not super surprising. The answers were most everybody, 72% of you guys were heavy smokers prior to vaping. I was a fairly heavy smoker prior to vaping. I was about two packs a week. You know, I wasn't like a pack a day smoker or a two pack a day smoker. I was about two packs a week. I would try to make one pack last a whole week, but that was rarely the case. Usually by Thursday morning, I was already buying that second pack. Heavy smoker prior to vaping. 13% were casual smokers prior to vaping. 5% social. 5% you didn't smoke but consumed other tobacco products like chewing tobacco, things like that. Maybe cigars. I get a lot of, uh, I've talked to a lot of people who are just cigar smokers and they smoke like two to three cigars a day, you know, before getting into vaping. And then there's this small portion, this 5% never really smoked or used tobacco products. And even that I'm okay with. I do believe, genuinely do believe that there are people that are that just have a predilection for smoking, for nicotine, for smoking. When I was very, very young, I wanted to smoke cigarettes. I just did. I liked the idea of inhaling something and exhaling vapor. Maybe it was because I grew up in a cold climate and you would go outside and you could see your breath. Like, Brian, check it out. See my breath. Yeah, I know. I always like to do it like in the early morning sunlight when you're skiing, you know, (sighs) see your breath. I just like that. I had a predilection to being a cigarette smoker. I feel like I was predetermined, you know, like it was manifest destiny, manifest destiny to be a cigarette smoker. I just liked it. And even now as a vapor, I I still like it. I still enjoy it. And even when I was a smoker, I wasn't one of these like self-loathing smokers that was just like, oh, I got to quit this shit. You know, I hate it. I I loved it. I love smoking. I wanted to just keep smoking. I was a smoker and I smoked so that I could smoke and I love smoking. I just loved it. So there you go. There's a little insight, I guess, on you guys. Three packs a day, right? That Bodie Ben. That does sound like a lot of cigarettes, but if you're in an environment where you can do that, then you don't even think about it. There were times when I would go down to Las Vegas, Nevada, and I would just smoke, just chain smoke, and I would go through two packs in a night, in an evening. It was smoking so much. It was crazy how much it was smoking. Um, So uh, there's, there's still a call to action for California. I'm going to put a link in the description, but there is still an official CASA call to action for California. There's still an official CASA call to action for uh, S-1253 for vape mail in the United States. There's still two call to actions for those. I'll post links to both of those in the description of this video. Um, Man, what else did I have to talk about? There was uh, there was this great article from Michelle Mitten. I wanted to talk about that. Oh man, we're slowly running out of time. That's okay. We got like, ah, uh, we might be running long. We're gonna try not to run long. We're gonna try. 
We're going to really try not to run long here. We're not going to talk about the Royal College of Physicians, although I will be putting a link down in the description to the Royal College of Physicians. Uh, in March, they updated their uh, evidence report, eight things to know about e-cigarettes. This is just a spectacular, spectacular post from uh, Public Health England. From Public Health England, they say things like... Uh, here, let's just do a couple of these. Vaping and heart disease, right? This was number two, vaping and heart disease. Controversial study. And I just want you to notice the difference. And I, I, I say this a lot in the vlog, and it's one of the things that really, truly, truly annoys me about the United States of America. Truly, truly annoys me about the United States of America in that we don't just get information. We don't just get it. We get messaging. You know, we get agenda. We don't get the percentage of youth vapors in the United States from the raw data. We get messaging that says, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic of youth vaping. Oh, can I see the numbers? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and we just kind of accept it. The differences in the United Kingdom, they're just very straightforward. Like, here's the data. Here's what it says. Here's what it means for you. Vaping and heart disease. A controversial study that reported that vapors had the same risk of heart disease as smokers was recently withdrawn by the journal, as it did not take into consideration that almost all of the vapors involved were current or former smokers. A better understanding of the effect of e-cigarettes on the heart is beginning to emerge. A randomized controlled dot trial that measured the vascular effects of smokers switching to vaping was published in December with encouraging results. Those who switched to e-cigarettes completely experienced the largest improvement in vascular health, health, getting close to healthy control. Larger studies with follow-up groups will provide big greater confidence. There you go. There's some information. Public Health England, just here it is. There you go. Harms compared to smoking. And this is the, like, one of the most important things of all. And I've always said this. If you're not comparing vaping to smoking, then you're not doing it right. You can't compare vaping to just breathing fresh air. That's not, that's not a, a, a good equivalency. That's not, a, that's not a good equivalency. Harms compared to smoking. Nearly one in three adults in England know that vaping is far less harmful than smoking. Yet, in 2018, the U.S. National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine found that the available evidence suggests e-cigarettes are far less harmful than conventional smoking. Public Health England's 2015 independent evidence report concluded that, while vaping may not be 100% safe, most of the chemicals cause smoke, causing smoking-related disease are absent, and the chemicals which are present pose limited danger. More research is needed into the relative harms of e-cigarettes. Last month, PHE commissioned the final and most ambitious report of the current series of e-cigarette updates, a team that combines authors of PHE's previous reports with other international experts are starting to work on a wide range of system systematic reviews, including one on safety, to permit our most authoritative assertment in 2022. Here's the information. Here's the information. Make your decision based on that. Here's the information. Why don't we get that? Why don't we get that in the United States? They go on to talk about the harms of nicotine. I think I have that one in here. No, no. Harms of, yeah, harms of nicotine. Four out of 10 smokers and ex-smokers wrongly think that nicotine causes most of the smoking-related cancers. What? Four out of 10 smokers and ex-smokers think that nicotine causes most of the smoking-related cancers when evidence shows nicotine actually carries minimal risk of harm to health. Nicotine carries minimal risk of harm to health. Although nicotine is the reason people become addicted to smoking, it is the thousands of other chemicals in cigarette smoke that cause most or all of the harm. Public Health England just uh, just keeping it real, just keeping it very, very real. And I appreciate that. I'm going to have a link down in the description to that, as well as this, uh, this report from uh, one of my heroes, you know her, you love her. It's Michelle Mitten. Yeah, Michelle Mitten from CEI did this uh, great little study, great, great little article, youth vaping rates, right? 
This is something propaganda causes death. I cannot, I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. I just saw one the other day. And look, I'm not voting for Trump. I'm going to make that perfectly clear. Definitely not voting for Trump. Definitely also not voting for Joe Biden. I'm not voting for Trump, but I keep seeing these like propaganda videos that are just useless. They're just, Trump is bad. Here's him being shady. And it's like a a picture, you know, propaganda. Give me the facts. Give me the facts. It's like this meme I saw the other day. Just give me the fact. This guy says, uh, well, we, we need to vote for Biden. And this other guy says, all right, we'll make the argument without mentioning Trump. <laughs> Can't. Can't. The left wants me to vote for them because they hate Trump. The right wants me to vote for them because they hate Biden. What? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to need a little bit more than that to go on. Hashtag vote your hopes. Back on track. Michelle Mitten. Youth vaping rate increased with anti-vaping campaigns. I'm going to try to attempt to read this whole thing right now. Today, the Competitive Enterprise Institute released a report on the connection between underage e-cigarette use and anti-vaping advocacy. Anti-vaping public messaging campaigns by government advocacy groups and the media backfired. Teen vaping did not escalate despite the increased anti-vaping messaging, but because of it, said Michelle Mitten, CEI senior fellow and author of the report, looking at the timeline, underage vaping rates went up along with anti-vaping campaigns that unintentionally portrayed vaping as cool and rebellious. Yeah, we know this. National Youth Tobacco Survey, what was the number one reason given? Curiosity. Curiosity. Flavors wasn't even second. Flavors was a third just before I can do tricks with them. The rate of high school students reporting past month use of e-cigarettes plummeted between 2015 and 2016, but surged again by 2018. Why? (laughs) The report, which I'll have linked down below in the description, and I'll have a link to this down in the description as well, The report details a number of multi-million dollar ad campaigns that were likely culprits. For example, a 2016 ad by the FDA called Don't Get Hacked that entertained with ominous music, mimicking the soundtrack of a slasher film playing with images of teenagers vaping. In one instance, a young woman walks into a dark alley to use her e-cigarette. Risky, cinematic, cool. Yeah. Mitten urges other ways to curb underage use of e-cigarettes, such as aiming communication at adults and giving the public, including adolescents, accurate, non-sensationalized information about the relative risks of non-combustible versus combustible forms of tobacco and nicotine consumption. The report also emphasizes some inescapable facts. Cigarette smoking kills approximately half of smokers who sustain the habit over their lifetime, whereas e-cigarettes are an estimated 95% less harmful. Health advocates should encourage smokers who have trouble quitting to at least switch to a product that delivers nicotine without combustion. Michelle Mitten, just great. Credit, Credit to the public health world. Credit to the tobacco world, whatever you want to call it. Harm reduction world. I'll be posting links to both of those down in the description. Um, I guess the last thing that I wanted to touch on, the last thing I wanted to touch on is that pod systems are ruining the industry. I'm just kidding. I had a whole rant planned. I'm not gonna do it just because I don't care. Pod systems aren't ruining the industry. The vape industry exists for the sole purpose of switching combustible tobacco users to a less harmful alternative. That's it. It doesn't exist so that we can have cool mods or fancy tanks or anything like that. It exists to switch smokers away from combustion into vaporization. Having cool stuff to vape and play with is just a byproduct of the technology. It's not the purpose of vaping. The purpose of vaping isn't to have a a two-post rye RDA that's the best damn draw. The purpose is to switch smokers. And if pod systems are going to switch smokers 
then good, then great. Love them or hate them, Juul converted, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of smokers away from smoking, possibly millions of smokers away from smoking. It might not be your preferred way to vape, but to gatekeep vaping, come on, come on. The rest is just a bonus, Viper Coils. The rest is just a bonus. Vape break. I'm just kidding. I don't have time for a vape break. So San Francisco banned flavors uh, what seems like forever ago. And uh, an economist did a... uh, did an economic impact study on San Francisco and concluded that banning vaping would have no impact on the local economy. No impact. Not going to have any impact on the local economy. Why? Because people would just start buying cigarettes again. On the record, that's what he said. It won't have an impact because those vape shops that close are just going to be replaced by people buying tobacco cigarettes. I'm going to have a link down in the description to the Reason Foundation, one of my favorite publications of all time, that says that exact thing, which leads us into Altria. This is from Barron's, barrons.com. Buy Altria stocks because Americans are smoking cigarettes again. Yeah, absolutely. Buy Altria stocks because Americans are smoking cigarettes again. Tobacco stocks have taken a beating in 2020, but Citigroup argues that Altria's beleaguered shares are a better buy for bargain hunters. Yeah, smoking cigarettes again. Uh, Unbelievable. Unbelievable to me. Uh, He writes that cigarette volumes in the U.S. appear to have improved about 1% to 2% decline in second quarter, helped by the side effects of the lockdown, bored and stressed consumers, while pricing has remained strong, boosting sales growth by around 8 to 9%. Traditional combustible tobacco cigarette sales are up 8 to 9%. The figures also serve as a reminder that everything seemed to matter in 2019. Everything that seemed to matter in 2019 no longer does. The last... In the last two years, investors investors were worried the cigarette industry was being disrupted by vapor. Currently, however, vapor sales are down 25% below last year's peak. The misinformation campaign is working as intended. Vapor product sales are down. Cigarette sales are up. Congratulations to Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, Truth Initiative, American Heart Association, American Lung Association, uh, the World Health Organization. Who else can we throw into the bus? Stanton fucking glance. When you scare people away from the less harmful alternative, they're just going to go back to deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. Deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes. Cheers. So just smoke. Fuck it. Just smoke. Who cares? Are people going back to deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes? Technically, yes. But so what? Cuomo? So so what? Vaping is better than smoking. Technically, yes. But so what? So the last thing we're going to touch on here in the uh, news and advocacy, yeah, a little bit in the news and advocacy here. And uh, New York is, uh, uh, nobody's going to be shipping to New York. I don't know if I will be sending any e-liquid to New York. I tried to stock some people up before this ban really took effect. I sent a bunch of e-liquid to New York. I would get fined quite a hefty amount of money if I get caught sending e-liquid to New York. Ah, that's a tough pill to swallow. I always said I'd become the Pablo Escobar of vaping. Shit, we'll see. Maybe if I ship it from my mailbox and, you know, create a shell corporation and on a Cayman Islands offshore holding account or something like that. I don't know how to do this. I don't, this is my first time being an outlaw, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I am also going to post this as of July 2nd, which is uh, today. July 2nd, 2020, we got an article here from realclearpolicy.com. 
The e-cig flavor ban in Massachusetts has spawned a $10 billion black market. In early June, Massachusetts' ban on flavored e-cigarette products went into effect. Massachusetts is the first state to prohibit the retail sale of flavored vaping products and flavored tobacco products like menthol cigarettes. While flavored e-cigs, e-cig use is still allowed in a handful of state-licensed smoking bars, Products in those establishments are hit with a whopping 75% excise tax. So in order to vape in Massachusetts, you have to go to a licensed smoking bar and pay a 75% excise tax on top of the price of your vape gear. That means in Massachusetts, it makes more fiscal sense. You would save money by switching from vaping to smoking, you would save money by switching from vaping to smoking. I can't see it any other way than they want people to smoke cigarettes, right? I mean, that that's the only thing that makes sense. That's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, it's unbelievable. Black market has sprung up in, uh, in Massachusetts. It was precisely... Then this is how the article ends. It was precisely then since the sensational coverage of the Evali epidemic, which the CDC has to be held accountable for Evali, right? We have to hold them accountable for Evali. We have to hold them accountable for COVID because I don't now I don't believe anything that the CDC says about COVID at all. The death count, the infection count, none of it. I believe zero of it. I still wear a mask. I still wash my hands. I still don't touch my face. I just can't believe anything from the CDC anymore. My trust in the CDC has eroded to, to nothing. The sensationalist coverage of Evali that led many states like Massachusetts to ban flavored vape products, even though there was no evidence the lung disease was connected to nicotine-based vape products. In fact, it was precisely a ban on prohibitive pricing on THC products that led to users seeking out an alternative outlets to obtain their products. Clearly, banning flavored e-cigarette products will drive many consumers to find their own flavors on the black market, again, exposing e-cig users to an unregulated, possibly contaminated product others may simply return to smoking. How can elected officials and advocacy groups claim their flavor bans are in the interest of public health. You can't. You fucking can't. I'm going to post a link in the description to everything I just talked about. I uh, had a little bit of news about Germany too because Germany's now switching gears and being concerned about youth nicotine use because once again, the United States and our ugly, gross, mainstream media and, and our Bloomberg money funded advocacy organizations, anti-vaping advocacy organizations, PAVE that commits perjury are just, again, getting their slimy octopus tentacles all over the world and apparently right into Germany, <laughs> right into Germany. And they say things like, well, even though smoking is at an all time low, we've noticed that people are really using e-cigarettes a lot and that needs to stop. What? What? You're crazy. You're crazy, Germany. You're cra you're crazy. So I'll post the link in the description to literally everything that I just talked about including the calls to actions, including real clear policy, including this wonderful article from Michelle Mitten and including the eight things you need to know about e-cigarettes from gov.uk. So, that leaves us with Literally no time left. We're going to be running long. Son of a bitch. We're just going to be running long. Let's do some super chats, you guys. Let's do some super chats real quick. Whoops. No, let's not do news again. What are you, crazy? Some super chats. That's all you get. Where did we leave off? Uh, sexy kid. Uh, Brendan, shout out to Australia's vapor advocate warriors. Yeah, absolutely. A absolutely. Everybody in Australia, Wodak, uh, uh, Mariwa Glover, uh, Colin Mendelson, Breeze Tones, everybody in Australia. Shout out to them. Lightbearer, 
So where's the Grim Army coffee? Look, I would love to do some Grim Army coffee. There's a small chance that we're going to be able to do some Grim Army coffee. Very small chance of that. So stay tuned, Light Bear. Uh, Elena, very gracious of you. PG has asomyelotic properties. One milligram of PG in 15 milligrams. 15 M2 air is enough to disinfect the air from microbes. Vapes have an aura of PG protection against COVID-19. Okay, yeah, maybe. I'm not a scientist. I can't speak to that in any capacity. Uh, I know that PG is an antibacterial. I know in the 50s they used it to disinfect schools. I've seen the posts on Twitter. Maybe that those are your posts on Twitter. I haven't looked into it enough to really speak to that, especially right now when we're running out of time. But yes, PG is an antibacterial. The problem is our juices are not just PG. Our juices are 70, 80, 90% vegetable glycerin. So I think the effect is going to be diminished. I think the protection from COVID-19 is actually coming from the nicotine. Sexy King Phil, chain smoking was my problem. Vaping saves lives. Yeah, I mean, 800% Sexy King Phil. Matthew, very gracious of you. Sorry, I can't give more, but I did buy the goat. Hey, appreciate that goat purchase. I still believe in the goat, Matthew. Still believe in the goat. Vapelians, by the way, dude, uh, can you shout out my website? People can use Yawk Song spelled incorrectly as a coupon for 10%. Sorry for the bad formatting. Super chats won't allow links. Sure. Vapelians, find him. He's on Instagram. I'm sure his Instagram, I'm sure his website is in his Instagram uh, bio. Go, go find him. Go find him. In fact, we're going to pause on the super chats right now. Fuck. Fuck everything. We can't do this in 15 minutes. We can't possibly do this in 15 minutes. I have a liquid that I really, really want to taste. I have a retro vape that I really, really want to vape. And I have a record that I really, really want to do a getting to know Grim Green on. All right. It looks like there's not going to be a getting to know Grim Green this week, unfortunately. So let's just do very random liquid tasting. Go. Yeah, so very random liquid tasting this week, you guys. We had some UK coils and some UK e-liquid from Vapelians. And now we got some UK liquid from Super Good, bro. Super Good. This is butter number four. What's that say? Chocolate cookie. Focus. Focus, you son of a bitch camera. Oh my gosh. Chocolate cookie, sweet cream, ice cream, milk. Chocolate. I have been, next week's title, we're going long. That's just, that. I should have put that on the back of the vlog day shirts. We're going long. I've been craving a chocolate e-liquid and I don't know why. I've just been craving, 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 craving a chocolate e-liquid. And so I found this from Super Good. Chocolate cookie, sweet cereal, ice cream, and milk. What? Ice cream and milk. So uh, I've already put the uh, necessary Nick shots in here because it is a short fill from the United Kingdom. You have to put your own nicotine in there. So I'm just giving a, give it a quick knuckle test. Here's, here's what flavor I'm hoping I don't get from this. I'm hoping I do not get any sort of uh, cardboard. Chocolate and cardboard seem to just go hand in hand like you wouldn't imagine. Chocolate and cardboard, chocolate and cardboard, chocolate and cardboard. I get cardboard every time I have chocolate. There was one chocolate e-liquid way back in the day called Golden Ticket that I really liked that was supposed to be a hot chocolate flavor even though I don't know what, what's the difference between hot chocolate and chocolate milk. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. So this chocolate cookie, sweet cereal, ice cream, and milk, I found completely compellingly satisfying. Like I just wanted to vape this. This is being vaped in a Kennedy 24 on top of the Mike Vapes clutch, mech mod, eh, Mike Vapes, eh, eh, eh. 
No, that's not what he does. I've never actually heard him go, eh. Has anybody heard him do that? Eh. No? All right. Haven't, haven't, haven't ever heard him do that. So chocolate, chocolate cookie, sweet cream. Okay. Chocolate cookie, sweet cereal, ice cream, milk. This is butter number four from Super Good. Let me just have a quick inaugural toot right now, as it were. Okay. Okay. Uh, so here's what I'm going to have to do. We're all going to have a little bit of a vape break together. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to kill the microphone so the audio is going to go dead like right now. Okay, okay, the, uh, this is really interesting. Um, it's definitely a chocolate. It's a chocolate, but it's not, I was expecting like chocolate milk or like chocolate pudding or something, but it really is like a chocolate cookie. It's got a strong bakery backbone to it. It's like if you took an Oreo, Everybody knows what an Oreo is. No pants. Batman. These are pants. What do you call this? <laughs> Nick, that's your crotch, man. It's chocolate. It's, uh, it's a chocolate cookie. It's like if you took an Oreo and twisted it apart and then only ate the chocolate cookie part. That's what this chocolate tastes like. Now... If you took that cookie and twisted it apart and took just the chocolate cookie part of the Oreo and you like put a bunch of them on vanilla ice cream or something like that, like a creamy, creamy vanilla ice cream, that's what this liquid tastes like to me. Chocolate cookie ice cream for sure. I don't get a lot of sweet. I don't get the cereal component to it. I don't get like the milky component to it unless they mean like the creaminess of like the ice cream component but it tastes like chocolate cookies on top of vanilla ice cream. It's really good. It's a chocolate that doesn't remind me of cardboard. It's a chocolate that doesn't remind me of like sticky kid hands, like a fudge sickle or like a, like a, like a fudge sickle stick, you know, that, like that you're done with your fudge sickle and you just have the sticky chocolate covered stick. That's usually what chocolate reminds me of. Damn. This is top notch. 
This is kind of, this is almost, this is almost the chocolate I was looking for. I was hoping for a little bit more chocolatey flavor, but I like the like chocolate ice cream sort of dance that's going on here. I kind of like it. Chocolate, ice cream, fresh vanilla, chocolate cookie, McFlurry. It's a little, it's not quite McFlurry E. -E. Yeah, it is it's kind of an artificial, it's not like a like a rich chocolate. It's like a it's like a Hershey, you know, like low tier American chocolate, like chocolate that I grew up with, chocolate I'm used to. That sort of like Swiss miss <laughs> kind of Hershey kind of artificial chocolate. And it pairs great with this beer. Pairs really great with this beer. Dang. All right, cool. I really wanted to get this liquid tasting in here. The super good butter number four. I was fascinated by it. I wanted a chocolate and damn it, I'm glad it's paying off as a chocolate. It's a happy smiling chocolate, Pono. It is a happy smiling chocolate, damn it. What up to you, Andrew? Happy smiling chocolate. Sweet Nice and sweet, not too sweet. It's not a lot of like saccharine, over-sweetened kind of flavor, but it's it's just a good level of sweetness for me. This Kennedy on the clutch is hitting awesome. All right, sick. Sick. All right, I at least had to get that out of the way. So what I want to do, you're vaping it right now, Adam Rose? You like it? Is it a wick destroyer? See, that's what I'm going to follow up with on next week. I want to see if this is really a wick destroyer because right now it's still vaping pretty clean. It's still vaping pretty clean. Usually with wick destroyers, at least what happens with YIG is even when you first start vaping it, your wicks start turning that like little, like a little bit of like orangey kind of color, Morty, like a little bit of orange color. Just a little bit of orange color. And you go, oh, this is going to be a coil destroyer. This is going to be a coil killer, man. I dig this. I dig that super good a lot. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to scrap retro vaping. We'll have a retro vaping next week. I want to add two more songs to the playlist. So let's do, uh, let me grab the record. Let's do Getting to Know Grim Green real quick, guys. I felt like, uh, so we're going to end this vlog with the getting to know Grim Green. We're going to end this vlog actually with the super chats. The super chats are what's going to run long. The super chats are what's going to run long, and that's fine. I want to get to every single super chat, but I wanted to add two more songs to the GTKGG playlist on Spotify because I've been listening to it like crazy. It's a banging playlist. It's a it's a banging playlist and the 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 band I felt like after listening through the playlist a bunch I felt like it needed some more metal in it you know so we're going to add some more metal more specifically some old school death metal to the getting to know grim green playlist this is the human album from the I mean pioneering death metal band simply titled death now The story behind this record is as follows. This was a time, this album came out in 1991. So let's see, how old was I in 1991? I don't know. 13? 13 years old in 1991, I think? 13 years old? 
That doesn't seem right. I guess I was 13 years old in 1991. That is crazy. So I was 13 years old in 1991, and I was kind of just dipping my toes into the into the heavier music kind of arena. Uh, I I I I, I tell I don't want to tell the whole story every time, but. I listened to, you know, in like sixth and seventh grade when you're a dumb kid and you don't really know what good music is. I was kind of listening to a lot of whatever was on the radio, you know, Vanilla Ice, you know, Ice Ice Baby, (laughs) Belle Biv DeVoe, That Girl is Poison, you know, that kind of stuff. Just whatever was on the radio, you know. And then I discovered rock and metal and I started listening to like the Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, that was one of the first records I bought. Uh, Queensryche Empire was one of the really first like heavier-ish albums that I bought. Kiss, you know, rock and stuff like that. And I started getting really fascinated by heavier and heavier and heavier music. That's just the progression. Once you start listening to rock music, you just start listening to heavier and heavier and heavier music. And so I started going down this, this path of heavy music and 1991, this is a time, you got to understand, this is before Spotify, this is before iTunes, this is before MP3s, this is before the internet. All you had to go off of was like metal magazines or whatever your friends liked, or in my case, my buddy Jim and I would just go down to the local Sam Goody in Reno, Nevada, and we would just buy albums kind of based on album artwork. That's what I would do. It's how I ended up with a Cathedral album. It's how I ended up with a Cannibal Corpse album. It's how I ended up with a Cancer album. I don't know if anybody's hip to the metal band Cancer, but uh, Cancer used an image from Night of the Living or from uh, Dawn of the Dead where the guy's getting chopped in the head with the knife, you know, and he's like blood and he's like, and there's like a knife in his head and he's like, and blood. I thought, oh, that's so fucking cool. So fucking metal. And I bought it and it wasn't that great. And so this was another album that I bought based purely on the album cover. And I saw the name of the band and I was like, death. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Death. The name of the band is actually death. And this is before I knew who death was. This is before I knew who Chuck was. Chuck Schillander from death. This is before I knew anything about anything about the death metal genre or the scene or anything like that. But death was part of that like late 90 late or late 80s early 90s florida death metal scene you know all of these death metal bands started popping up in florida of all places and it was just a whole big scene down there and this is almost objectively but at least in my personal opinion the best death record. They had some ones before this. They had Scream Bloody Gore. They had Spiritual Healing. And a lot of those albums, they're death metal albums, but they're boring death metal albums. You know, it's like, it's a lot of chop and steak and it's lots, it's a lot of, <laughs> boring, kind of boring death metal, right? That's the way that Cancer album was, which is kind of boring death metal. But when I heard human, it, it completely blew me away. And, and reading back now, I can go, oh, wow, that was really like, that was really their most popular album. And that's when their, their style really did change. And they became a lot more techy and a lot more like proggy sort of death metal. And it's just, it's riffy and it's great. And I love his vocals. And it's not just boring death metal vocals. Because again, at that time in the 90s, death metal was just becoming a thing you know it wasn't its own genre i mean it was its own genre but it wasn't nobody knew what they were doing and it was like well how do you want to do your death metal vocals i don't know just go you know no style to it no substance to it really this album changed everything it changed a lot of death metal and it became like a benchmark death metal album and chuck schillander of death is seen as one of if not the biggest pioneers of death metal in the United States. And so this death album is very, very sentimental to me. It was the first death metal record that I really, truly loved, that I really, truly got into. Yeah, exactly, Ray. Florida was like the death metal 
capital. See, and like nuclear assault, I would consider nuclear assault, Ray, a little bit more thrashy than deathy. Yeah, Possessed was one of the bands around the same time that was becoming a little bit more more techy, a little bit more progressive, although Possessed was from California. They weren't part of like the Florida death metal scene. This album, if you're even passively interested in metal or death metal, I would highly suggest giving it a listen. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two tracks from my favorite death metal album on the Getting to Know Grim Green playlist. The first track, first track on the album, Flattening of Emotions. It's unbelievable. It's an unbelievable song. It's still, that song gets the most play off of this particular album. And then we're going to put the fourth track, Secret Face. And one thing that I really loved about this particular death metal album and this particular death album is the lyrics, they were lyrically a little bit more cerebral, you know, a little bit more deep. They weren't just singing about like guts and entrails and, uh, you know, like cannibal corpse type lyrics and, and, you know, just, oh, bloody guts and, you know, vomit and I'm vomiting into your gut hole and things like that. It wasn't just shallow, like shattered rib cages with guts spewing everywhere. It wasn't, you know, that's fine, but it's not, you know, it lacks any real depth. These were like, these were much more like cerebral, deep, you know, dealt with more, you know, mental things and, and emotions and flattening of, flattening of emotions together as one secret face, lack of comprehension, cosmic sea, just very, very cool lyrics and not so much the cookie cutter, like I'm going to take a shit in your chest cavity and sew it back up and then cut your guts back out and shove them up your ass kind of stuff. You know, not, not really vomit gut hole, right? <laughs> A lot less that, a lot more like metaphysical, sort of cerebral lyrics that dealt with issues and, and, you know, feelings and, you know, I don't know, just a lot more mature death metal, I guess, a little bit more grown up death metal. And Chuck, the guitar player on this album, he, he's just a genius. All the riffs on this album are just blazingly awesome. So there you go. This is one of the huge Grim Green albums of my life. This is the Human Death album. Still holds up. Still is amazing. Still love it beyond comprehension. And we're putting Flattening of Emotions and Secret Face on the Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist, which will be linked down below. Boosh. There was a lot of albums that I bought simply based on the album artwork that did not pan out. I grew to appreciate them and I, and I grew to love them like Cathedral, The Ethereal Mirror. I bought solely based on the album artwork and uh, I didn't like it at that time. I just, I just fucking hated it. I thought it was the worst shit ever. I regretted my purchase instantly, you know, almost instantly. But Death Human, oh, Death Human. What a great record. So, like I said, I'm going to have those two tracks linked uh, on the Grim Green, Getting to Know Grim Green Spotify playlist. It'll be linked down below in the description. You can go listen to it. Just put it on shuffle and just thank your ear holes for the ear candy that it's about to receive from this particular playlist. We might do the Iron Maiden record next week. We might do the Iron Record Maiden last week. Ray says he got to see Death at Lemours in Brooklyn. Fucking A. I never got to see Death. Never got to see Death Live. Chuck passed away uh, in the late 90s. Never got to see Death Live, which is a bummer. In fact, uh, Individual Thought Patterns, the album they released right after this, is also really good. Really good. It kept going down the same path. And, you know, he, he didn't play on this album, but Gene Hoagland was in Death for a while. And Gene Hoagland is like legendary death metal drummer. Death metal drummers are just hard to find. I know from being in a death metal band, death metal drummers are just hard to find. And Gene Hoagland played, I mean, he played in Opeth. He played with Devin in Strapping Young Lad. He played in uh, Old Man's Child. He played in Malevolent Creation. He played in Death. He would just bounced around between all these death metal bands, all these death metal bands. Anyway, Death, Human, 
check out this playlist down below. If you come across a song you don't like, just skip it because the next one is going to be some of the dopest shit you've ever heard. Only bangers. Only bangers on that playlist. So uh, let's take this vlog off into the sunset. Let's end this with, uh, let's end this with some super chats. Vaping with super clouds. Very gracious of you. Thank you. He says, cheers for the shout out, Nick. Please shout out the cloud cave, AKA the vaping veteran, Rob, Rob, Beardo, huge fan of yours. Boosh, yo, yo, Nick. See you next week for more fun. If we ever meet, I'll shout you a beer. You'll shout you're a beer. Vaping with super clouds. I appreciate that. And yeah, let's shout out uh, the Cloud Cave, aka Vaping Veteran Rob Beardo. Appreciate you. Yo, yo, to you, Vaping with super clouds. Lindsay Smith, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, I love the vlog. Uh, I'm from Washington and I've had issues with getting things shipped. As far as I know, we don't have a ban anymore. I'm wondering what's going on and why companies can't ship to Washington. Uh, Lindsay, I don't know, man. Uh, The only thing I can think of is that maybe there's so much confusion and information and who has a ban and who doesn't have a ban. States aren't exactly great at communicating their vape laws publicly to, to, to the proletariat, to people. And so I have a feeling it's a case of vape companies just being maybe a little bit overly cautious. Like, can we ship to Washington? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know if we can ship to Washington. I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't ship to Washington. I think that could be the case. I'll get the word out. Vape vendors just ship to Lindsay, ship to Washington. She needs, <laughs> she needs vape stuff. Lindsay in Washington needs vape stuff. Please let's start shipping to Washington. Appreciate that, Lindsay. Daniel two trips eighty six. I am a super chat. You are a super chat. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a reference again? I'm bad at references. I won't get any references from Game of Thrones. Just letting you know. Just throwing that out there. Game of Thrones. Uh, Z man. Blue screen of death, uh, gracious of you. Love you, brother. I love you. Thank you for being here, man. Love you, brother. Uh, Israelion triple six. Good morning, Nick from Melbs. Love you, my G. Boosh. Dude, just sharing a lot of love here today, man. Appreciate that, Israelion triple six. Matt Sinister, bring back the 510 report. That will free up time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you and Logan exhales. Yeah, I. you know, I love the 510 report. Um, I just... There's not enough hours in the day to accomplish everything that I want to accomplish. If I had like a team, an investigative journalist team that could help me with the 510 report, we might be able to do the 510 report. If I had someone to edit videos for me, you know, that's a YouTuber thing that I haven't reached yet. All the big YouTubers, Philip DeFranco, Steven Crowder, all the big YouTubers, even like my favorite Mr. Sunday movies, they all have people that edit their videos. They just shoot it, send the files off, and and someone else edits it. I edit all my own stuff, and the 510 report was especially like overwhelming to edit. I'm like, okay, well, I need a picture of this politician. Oh, I need a picture of that guy. Oh, I need a picture of campaign for tobacco-free kids. Oh, I need a picture of this guy. Oh, I need a picture of that guy. Okay, let's screenshot this article. Let's screenshot this paragraph. Oh, let's screenshot it. We got to highlight it in Photoshop, and then we got to put it on the background, and then we got to put it in the video. It was a lot. It was a lot, and I would love to bring back the 510 report. I would live and die to bring back the 510 report. That would be my favorite thing, but in the meantime... It's probably just not going to happen for a while. Anthony Ramella, very gracious of you. Trump and Biden are not the right choice for pre- are not the right choice for president. Technically, yes, but so what? Much love, Nick. Yeah, you know what, Anthony? I, I'm not. I'm never going to tell you guys who to vote for. I'm not going to tell Anthony who to vote for. Just vote your hopes. I I refuse to choose between two people that I, I trying to choose the person I hate the least. You know, I don't accept the only part of this entire narrative that's going on right now that I do not accept is that we have to vote blue if we want to solve anything. Got to vote vote for Biden. Well, why? <laughs> why? Because he's because he's 75 years old and he's and he's been in politics, you know, since since the 60s, not to mention 8 years with Obama and didn't change anything. Why am I suddenly believe you're going to change things now? Empty promises. 
Empty promises, Biden. Empty promises. Suburban Dirt Farmer 89, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, I sick Kennedy, brah. Uh, but the recoil is still the best RDA for flavor. Sorry, I kind of cleaned out the merch store. Thanks for everything you do. I'm going to keep on vaping. You keep on vaping, Suburban Dirt Farmer. Enjoy your spoils. I really appreciate it. Uh, live in hints. You don't need to mention me. We are metal. I am here to help. I was 22 in 1991. Oh, okay. So look, live in hints. If you were into metal and you were 22 in 1991, you probably got to see all the cool bands. Like you probably got to see Death at their prime. You probably got to see Malevolent Creation at their time. You probably got to see Morbid Angel. If you tell me that you got to see Morbid Angel in the 90s, I'm going to be so jealous. I'm going to be obscenely jealous. Death metal now doesn't hold a candle to 1990s Florida death metal. Sorry, it just it just doesn't. Death metal now is way too generic. But if that's what you're into, then that's what you're into. Just enjoy what you like. Who gives a fuck what I say? Z-Man, Blue Screen of Death, one more time. Hey, Grim, if you ever get a chance, my friend has a band called Fable. It's like black folk metal. What? If you're into that sort of thing, look it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, I love folky black metal. There are, I go through phases in my life where sometimes I just want to listen to just really horribly underproduced black metal. Like that sounds like it was recorded in a hallway, in a cave, on a Fisher Price tape recorder. That's what I want to listen to sometimes. Like the Arctic Thunder album from Dark Throne. <sighs> so good. And it sounds terrible, but I love it. In fact, there is a Christian black metal band named Horde, H-O-R-D-E. Check them out. They are awesome. <laughs> they are awesome. And they're a black metal band and they sing about the Christ. And, and I love them. They're so fantastic. But it sounds like it was recorded at the end of a hallway in a cave on a Fisher Price tape recorder. Death Wish triple sevens. Uh, just hi to your face, my friend. Hi to your face, Death Wish. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, and then lastly, last super chat. I knew we were running long. Barbara, uh, shout out niece Haley, headed your way, 718, heart you. Absolutely, Barbara. I'll always shout out family. Niece Haley, headed your way on 718. Spectacular, Barbara Burgess. Appreciate you. Hope you're doing good, cuz. All right, uh, well, that's gonna wrap up the Super Chats, and that is actually going to bring us to the very end of this here vlog. We ran long, like we always do, about 15 minutes, but thank you guys, seriously, so, so much for being here. I got a great new mouth-to-lung vape with black licorice and menthol in it from Vapelians, loaded up with some Vapelians coils. I got a new chocolate liquid. I mean, today was a good day. Today was a really very good day. I'm out of water. I need to go hydrate hydro homies. In fact, right after this, I have to go pack merch store orders. So there you go. Appreciate you guys so much. Um, I, let me, I don't think I forgot anything. I, I don't think I forgot anything. I got lethal coils, coils for the build stream on Monday. I think I got everything. I, I think we're good to go. So here's where we're gonna end the vlog. Thank you guys, seriously, as always, so much for coming out. You guys right here, Millerman Chris, William, Lee, Thobai, Addy, Ray, Thobai, Kid Bass, Lee, John Haymaker, Eugene, you guys that make it to the end of the vlog, you're just my favorite people on earth. Someday when all of this COVID hogwash is over and we ever get to meet in real life, I do dispense crisp high fives or let's just go in for the full hug. Let's just go in for the full hug. Don't forget, that's what she said's coming up at seven. Uh, so go check them out. Appreciate you guys. Thank you guys seriously so much for coming out. Remember, no matter what anybody tells you, vaping is still at least 95% less harmful for you than burning combustible tobacco cigarettes. So yeah, let's keep on vaping, guys. Be excellent to each other. Peace.